Thank you so much, mm -hmm. Dr. Chapman. If you would go from here, uh, we would appreciate it at six o'clock of the hour for the Lynch Street Sydney Church as we try to do what we can to try to help uh, the persons to get out to vote. I present now the one and only Dr. Shonda D. Chapman, all the way from Jackson <laughs> Street, and she just finished in the I love Dr. Shonda D. Chapman. Okay. Well, thank you, Pastor Williams, and thank you, everybody that has logged on to our Round Up Your Vote roundtable discussions with Senator Solly B. Norwood, and we're here just mainly trying to really get an understanding and have a nice dialogue and conversation about the, you know, voter participation process. How do we go about maximizing our vote to making sure that it counts where we need it to count? Um, and all that jazz. So I have Senator Norwood here, and like I said, we're going to be asking um, about, you know, seven or so questions, and then if anybody else has any questions, we most definitely welcome those so we can get some kind of clarity and, um, you know, answers to you on those particular questions. So Senator Norwood, I don't know if you wanted to give us a nice little brief anything before we get started with the questions. I'd just like to say, uh, you know, hello to all. It's uh, every day uh, is a great day, and I just thank God for it. So uh, we're ready to shake, rattle, and roll. I think the pastor and the pastor and uh, Brian has already uh, kicked it in high gear. So we just we just fill in where we fit in. Okay. Well, good. All right. Well, I want to kick it off with the first question of why is voting in this particular election so important for us this year? Well, many reasons, you know, I, I think the fact that now that we have the right to vote, we should honor that right. I mean, it's, it's a right that didn't come easy. Uh, many struggle, Many died and many died without having the right. Now we have the right to vote. And I think we can't take it uh, lightly as something we have to take serious. And um, because, you know, every day the, 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 the system and the, the, the uh, uh, judicial system, the courts and the legislative branch are doing things to cut into our rights to vote. You know, the Voting Rights Act is being uh, cut back in the, you know, this year, and I, 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 I don't agree with much that Donald Trump says, but he says, uh, and he reminds us uh, what we already know that elections have consequences. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we look at the, the appointment of, uh, of federal judges that he has appointed, and the fact that he has appointed over 200 federal judges and we, uh, my last count, we didn't have any, we may have one uh, uh, a black or brown uh, federal judge that's, that's appointed. Now, when you look at the, uh, the, the Supreme Court uh, appointee that's being considered now, the impact that we have, and all of this was on the ballot last, uh, in 2016 when he ran and we knew it, but yet we had uh, we had far less of us deciding to go out and vote. We didn't like uh, Hillary Clinton. We didn't like Donald Trump. So what we decided to do is stay home. And when we stay home and fail to participate in the process, then we uh, let other folks choose who's going to lead us. And so that's that's one of the reasons it's most important that we go out and vote to participate in this democracy. And in order for us to do that, we must have registered by yesterday and we must vote. And in voting uh, 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 by absentee or in person, absentee will go to, uh, if you're gonna do it in person, you go to October the 31st at 5 p.m. at the uh, circuit clerk's office or at your polling site on November the 3rd from 7 uh, to 7. 
Okay, and I'm so glad you mentioned that because I was wondering, like, okay, you know, if we already have done the due diligence to get registered and all that good stuff, so what's next? Like, how exactly does my vote count in any kind of election, whether it's local, statewide, or nationally? How does my vote, like, actually count in those particular elections? Well, you know, many elections are decided by one vote. I, when I first won to get into the uh, a runoff uh, in my election, I, I, I got in by uh, six, with six votes. So there's truly a case that every vote counts. And um, uh, I thank God for those six folks that decided to show up at the poll and, and to help, uh, help get me over the threshold. So it, your vote gonna count. And, and, and I think what we, what I encourage everyone to make it personal. I look in every election and see how this election is gonna affect me, it's gonna affect my neighbor, how it's gonna affect my family, how it's gonna affect my, you know, my children and my uh, my grandchildren and, and, you know, God forbid, my parents are still living, how it's going to affect my, my parents. So let's make the elections personal. When you go to the poll or, or if you go to the to the circuit clerk's office and cast your ballot now, uh, uh, you get a chance to see that being deposited. You know your vote, you have, you have voted the, the conviction of your conscience. You have voted your interest. When you go out on the uh, 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 the third, you get a chance to see your vote go in. You, you, you get a chance to see that number. You're being a number of the individuals that participated in the process. And one thing I say uh, uh, here in Hines County, Hines County, we're very blessed and very fortunate to have uh, a young um, African-American circuit clerk. Uh, that's not happening. All of the, the, a lot of the individuals that we know are voting absentee uh, across the state, their votes are not going to be counted because of the process. You have to have a witness if you're not voting in person. You have to have, uh, if you're not elderly, I mean, if you're not disabled, uh, permanent or temporary, you have to have your ballot notarized. Students in college have to have their ballots notarized. And if you fail to send, if you fail to go through those process, then your votes will not count. And that is that is really disturbing because in this environment now, you have to you have to go and uh, visit someone, or you have to invite someone into your house that you or your home that you may not have uh, ordinarily been in contact with to get them to notarize uh, your ballot, which is going to subject you to uh, to the virus that that's not we tried to get that passed but it did not it did not work so we are encouraging as many if you feel up to it and if you're eligible to go and vote absentee go and do it now because you have you have uh, about a uh, uh, little less than four weeks now to uh to to vote absentee and we'll pray that you would have one day between uh, this day and the 31st of October, October that you will feel well, that you can go out and stand in the line if you need to and vote. But if you fail to go out and do it uh, in person before October 31st, then that means you have to go down to the uh, to your precinct and it may be a little bit longer. And we pray that we have long lines because we won't, that means more people are participating. So we pray that it, it may be a little, 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 little uncomfortable for us, but that's okay. Let's be uncomfortable for two or three hours rather than being uncomfortable for four more years. That is so true. So I was wondering when you were mentioning um, all of the steps and processes with like um, getting certain ballots notarized and all that stuff, who specifically, or like where can you get more information about all of the items that you need to get that absentee ballot or um, things notarized and stuff like that. Is there like a particular office that you can call or go to or? The circuit clerk's office is, uh, is the circuit clerk's office and secretary of state's office. They are the, uh, the, the holders of those, uh, those information. Um, and you know, it's, 
the process is quite um, uh, difficult in some cases, and they make it difficult because you have to request a ballot, and then you have you have to request to to be able to receive a ballot, and then you once you receive the ballot, you have to go through the process, then you have to get it back in. And in order for it to be counted, it has to be postmarked in, uh, 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 and be into the secretary, into the uh, circuit clerk's office, you know. And I think I was, I think we said you have like three, I think you have like five. It has to be postmarked on that date. But we're asking mm -hmm. folks not to do that. Go ahead and mm -hmm. get it in now so you can be, sh be assured. Uh, that it counts. That it can count, yes. And I was wondering if, um, like, the circuit clerk's office or the courthouse has, like, a um, a drop-off near there for any kind of ballots and stuff like that, like absentee ballots, or is there a drop-off if they don't necessarily trust the postal office to do it? Now, unfortunately, this is Mississippi. I know. I know. In Mississippi is not uh, our job, as we think, is to make it difficult, not to make it easy. It would have been, and we tried all of that. And you know, uh, I know on the, on the Senate side, we basically uh, one of our one of our Democratic senators on the election committee actually um, threw a fit in the chamber because his concern was as all of our concern was that you know the the harm that we're putting people uh, through to just basically participate in this democracy, and it's not. Um, and you when you and you when we look at what's happening across the country, and you look at the legislation that we pushed here in Mississippi, everything comes home. We try to get them to count the ballots as they will come in and keep a running tab. So. Come uh, 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 the election night, you would have you would have your basic absentee ballots already counted, and and in some cases, you know, I'm sure that some of that's going to take place on an individual basis, but that's not something that the state is really pushing to allow that to happen. Uh, so it's their job is to make it difficult for uh, for us to participate in the process, and it's very unfortunate. You just made me sad talking about it like that. I'm not even gonna lie to you. <laughs> now I do have a question about, you know, how should we get involved like in our community or with our, our local government or, you know, any kind of participation as far as after election day, whether it's local, state or national, you know, election, how do we get involved in our um, governmental process after any kind of election? How would you suggest we get involved after well, election day? Well, one of the things that I would, one of the things that I would strongly recommend as uh, Dr. Bridges has done uh, with the, uh, some volunteers is to put together a call list of calling, uh, calling these individuals, calling their neighbors, calling their friends in several precincts around throughout this uh, this West Central Jackson area, uh, encourage them to go out and participate in, in the process. That's that's going that's going to help us to get individuals with like-minded individuals elected. After the election is over, you know, once election is done, especially with this election, we're looking at uh, the judges. We have judges on the ballot, so we will have. Uh, that's going to give us an, an inroad into. Uh, if you if you're serving on jury duties, or uh, if if God forbid, you know, uh, activities were unfortunate activities, circumstances they happen, you know, you want mm -hmm. you want to be able to look to a, and see a judge that looked like us, you know, a judge that basically walked in in our shoes. This op we have an opportunity here to elect uh, 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 our second African American to the uh, Supreme Court, and which would be. Um, to, to us, progress. Mississippi is about 38% uh, African American. We do not have a statewide elected official. When you look at Michigan, when you look at uh, 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 Wisconsin, they have young African American lieutenant governors. 
because we have individuals that have struggled and have tried, and not that they were not qualified. They were more than qualified, but uh, they were rejected. Uh, so we, we can start, you know, after this election, getting ready for the next election. And I mean, I think the next election is going to be four years. The next election is going to be the city council, which will be in about six months. The next election will be about two years, which will be the, uh, the state election. Uh, and that's one thing that we, we do not do as much as I think that we, we could do and should do is uh, start preparing early. You know, we needed to develop uh, individuals that are interested in running for office. You know, right now we have city we have city council uh, seats coming up in in, in May of uh, next year. Who do we we don't own these seats? Who do you who who? And you know, we need to be the community to look into individuals that will that can be uh, tapped to to seek these positions. As elected officials, we need to be looking to individuals that we can help groom to run and, and, and to run for these positions. You know, and that's one thing that we fail to do in our community, but they do this in the other community. Kate Reed didn't just wake up one day and decide he wanted to become governor. They planned for Tate Reed. When Tate Reed ran against Gary Anderson, Tate Reed was the least uh, qualified person in the race, but he won. Then he ran for governor, mm -hmm. he ran for lieutenant governor. He was not the most qualified person in the in the gubernatorial uh, in the lieutenant governor's race. Then he ran for governor. So every race that he has been engaged in, he won. But he was not the most qualified, the most capable person in that race. But because of the establishment, he got he got in with the establishment. They put money behind it. They worked with him. They they you know and they trained him and provided. All sorts of reasons. So that's what we have to do in terms of our community. We have to, you know, reach out among us. As it says in the Bible, you know, look out among us and find and work with individuals and not be selfish. And I know I probably went on longer than I should have there, but. No, no. I was listening to all of what you were saying, and it was just kind of like, you know, in the mind frame of when you were talking about the grooming process. Like, who exactly would you be grooming for these particular positions? Do they have to have, like, certain qualifications for, you know, to run for local office and stuff like that? I mean, of course, we would want to put our, you know, best candidate forward with a lot of these different positions and stuff like that. But if somebody's, like, in the process of, you know, possibly wanting to express some sort of interest in any of these, you know, types of offices, what exactly or what resources would you offer to them to, you know, get a breast, you know, a breast on and, and being able to read up and study and, you know, ask certain people what they need to do? Well, first of all, when the, the city election is coming up, when the city election come up, you are you're best looking at about two years, two years of residency, uh, two years living in the ward where you're going to, uh, where you will be competing in, and uh, you know, obviously, people are going to pull your record to see if you've been voting, uh, if you've been voting, to, and if you've been voting, uh, get as much information about your uh, uh, voting record, um, and those are those are your basic. Those are your basic qualities. The length of time that you uh, live in the in the, uh, the ward or the district, uh, and mostly it's about two years. And uh, like I say, and um, other than that, you just you you know money. There's a filing fee up until last year, up until this past election. I think your filing fee was like ten dollars or fifteen dollars. So, which you you had a lot of people getting in the race that you know that really had no interest. Uh, but they were just getting in there for wrong for, for for many for the wrong reason, and they were not supportive of. Uh, and I said the wrong reason. What I'm talking about there is that somebody else put them up to get in the race, so they can be a barrier rather than them genuinely wanting to run and to uh, impact uh, the community. But it's it's uh, and I, how I got involved. I just I f I went to there was actually an uh uh. uh a forum for a um, person that had interest in running for office 
and it was for females, all females, and I was the only male in the group. And it was being sponsored by the AKAs at my church. And I just, I just, I went to the forum and, uh, uh, and I sat there just as quietly, but I took all the information that they had. And, uh, but that day when I walked out the forum, I knew that I wanted to participate in the process. And once the, you know, the, the unfortunate uh, death of uh, Senator Harton, uh, you know, I soon made up my mind to go ahead and uh, uh, enter the race. Now, I don't have to be the only one that asks, you know, ask questions, people. So if you have a question that you want to get answered, you know, answered, please feel free to hop on in the conversation. All right. It's not just a dialogue, you know, a monologue. It's a dialogue what? with everybody. Did somebody have a, a question? May I? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's me. This is Lap. Lap, yeah. Uh, Senator Norwood, how are you doing, sir? Very well. How about yourself? Hello. Very well. How about yourself? Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Uh -oh. um, I appreciate what you just uh, stated in reference to um, um, the statewide elections uh, and the issue that's on the ballot for this year with Mississippi and. I think it's very important that people, and especially black people, that we understand that we need to vote the right way on that particular issue as well as the candidate. But this issue is one with statewide, the statewide election. It is also something that should be addressed at the national level. Let me specifically point out what I'm talking about. 2016, yes, less than 40, 30 to 40% of black people did not vote, okay? But the fact of the matter is still this, and we tend to forget that Donald Trump received less than 3 million votes than Hillary Clinton of the popular votes. But she was, but he was elected by the electors or the electoral college. All it takes is 274 electors, 274 individuals. We're talking about a country that has 330 million people. But this man is sitting at the White House because of the Electoral College. It's similar to what we are dealing with right now with the state of Mississippi. And you're totally correct. Um, I always tell people, I've been in professional planning for 48 years. And I always tell people this, and I don't mind saying this that there are certain people who they plan ahead. That's called preliminary planning. Then there are other individuals who are reactionary planners. They wait until a problem has arisen and they try to plan to solve it. That's us. We have to plan ahead. And you made some good points on that. And when you mention about the current governor being selected to run, that was preliminary planning. That was preliminary planning. But I'm going to make one other statement because this individual who I'm getting ready to name was also, and is, in, is on the Mississippi ballot. And that's Kanye West. They have planned ahead of time to put him on there to try to pull any and as many of the young blacks who support him to pull votes away from the Democratic candidate. 
but I appreciate everything that you've said. I'm not going to take up a lot of your time on this. And and uh, like you were saying, I'm not going to speak too long on that because I will run my mouth on it. But anyway, I just wanted to um, to applaud you on what you stated because I was listening to you. I know you very well. You know that. Yeah. But I was listening to you. You made very good points. Very good points. And this is what we have to do. Everything that you've said is what we have to do. We have to plan ahead. But we have to get the message out. We have a problem among our race. So I'm going to let it go at that. But I'll come back later on. Well, I think, and I, and I appreciate that. And um, what Brother Baker was talking about was the uh, um, you know, House Concurrent Resolution Number 47. You know, that, that, uh, and that's mm -hmm. only valid. And it's only valid because the, the judge had basically ruled that we would change it. And there again, it was because of uh, uh, former AG Holder that uh, introduced uh, a lawsuit and the judge uh, uh, agreed with that, 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 that Mississippi, Mississippi, the only state in the United States with that now that has basically opened it up where we can start that's right running with uh with uh -huh. bigger to get uh african americans elected statewide but that's only going to happen when we participate in Thank the process we can't, we can't win with uh 32 uh, of the uh, 32 of the uh percent of the of the eligible uh, voters african american voters and if you got if we're 38 percent um, we need to be voting at 38 percent. You know, we need to we need to max it out because these the only way we're gonna and when we go in the room, when we go in the room, if we go in the room with uh, with 38 uh, uh, percent, uh, uh, when you max out the eligible voters in our community, when you go in that room, you go in that room with some authority. You go in that room with a mandate. But when you go in there with 15 and 20 percent of the of the eligible voters, uh, 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 and I'm saying, I'm saying 38. percent I'm talking about 100 percent of the of the eligible of the eligible voters. So it's really uh, we're shortchanging ourselves. But this year, that's going to change, you know. And and not not that Mississippi was so good and so great, but because because federal judge said you're going to do it if you fail to do it, then I will do it. And redistricting is coming up, so that's a process. Uh -huh. That we need to be, we need to be engaged in. That's really important that we get this, get the census, get an accurate census count, participate in this process, and make sure that we, uh, they don't, mm -hmm. uh, the lines are not drawn to, to the, where we're going to lose representation, but where we can gain representation. And one of the things, one of the mm -hmm. conversations that we participated in is that, you know, it's, it's African American, so it's affecting us. We, uh, we're going to have to feel comfortable running in district that's not 70 and 80 percent african-american we're going to have to unpack some of these districts uh, if we can get you know i need to feel comfortable running <laughs> in a district that has uh, uh you know a good portion of, of white mississippians in there uh and we we need to do that all across the state uh -huh. that give us that's going to make us uh, African Americans and the the white Americans, the Republicans and the Democrats that participate in the process. That's going to make us work harder and make us feel more accountable and responsible because to you, uh, the voters, because we're going to have to touch bases. But right now, if you have like a, a like say 80, 85, 86 percent. Then it just does not give. They gonna have the 80, 85, and 86. When you look at the black voting age population in some of our districts, and the and the, the makeup of those districts is actually quite disturbing. So that's something that as we go forward, we're gonna we're gonna have to look at so we can increase the number. That's the reason we have, you know, so few of Af in the Senate. Like I said, we only have 14. We have 14 African Americans and we have uh, 16 Democrats. 16 um, two white. Uh, uh, two white Democrats that that's a part of the, of our of our caucus. They're loyal, hardworking Democrats. So we need to get some. More, we, there are areas that we can get some more whites to come in. We're not going to get. We're not going to get this. We're not going to win this battle, this war with just all black folks. We're going to have to get 
some whites, some white Dem and we got, right. some, got some white Democrats out there that 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 we have to applaud for uh -huh. with our agenda. Uh, uh, Madam Madam Mar uh, Moderator, uh, uh, Reverend Williams here. I just wanted to share uh, uh, with this, uh, our awesome senator here, as well as uh, Dr. Bridges, that's on, and we're so glad to have you with all today. But could you push that, unpack that a little bit more? I'm basically new. I'm going on my third year here. You said if we had 14, wait a minute now. You said we had 14 and we have an opportunity to get some, because I'm with you to get some other persons to be voting with us. Could you unpack that just a tad? Well, we have 14, we have 14 um, uh, African-Americans. We have 16 Democrats. Now, uh, last year we lost. We had up in Northeast Mississippi, we uh, uh, we lost one, two. We lost three white Democrats. The dynamics of the district changed, and to be honest, they had they were there, and one of them had been there probably about 30, 30, 30, 30 years plus. Well, that's a district that we should have started grooming some young. They're doing for African American to win, but we could we got some young white Democrats that we can start mm -hmm. in those areas to to succeed these guys. Down in Natchez, we lost Natchez, uh uh Senator Deer in there, retired. That's an area that we should have been able to groom an African American or uh, that you know, at least we could have kept it in the Democratic column. But but it's because we hold on to the seats and uh you know many too long and we do not have the uh, uh got to have the mindset up in northeast mississippi and you gotta have someone that's that's that can that can mix with white and black you're not gonna get a black person up there that's gonna be uh stokely carmichael you got to get a black person up there that can can have those develop those relationships and still be uh, uh, genuine to to who uh he or she is but if we change the numbers with the census, if we, we do not allow the lines to be drawn and we have the districts packed, so uh, uh, that would allow us to, to recruit more individuals to, to come in and be, uh, you know, be a force to be reckoned with going forward. Thank you, Madam Moderator. I, I did have a, um, a question about the sample ballot. I know uh, we have like a copy of what it looks like, but how do we go about maximizing that ballot? So how do how should we go about dissecting it to where we are understanding, okay, what's actually being voted for, you know, in those particular categories? And as far as like for certain positions where they may not have a Democrat or Republican um, affiliation with it. How do we go about um, figuring out if if those positions necessarily needed to be, you know, need to be voted on and, and stuff like that? So do you necessarily have to check every box on a ballot in order for it to be cast properly? No. And again, just like I said, how, how do you go about dissecting it to where okay, this issue is on there, this issue is on there. Because I know uh, recently I just saw what towards the end of that sample ballot where they have the flag and stuff like that, that there is a um, initiative there, 47, I want to say, and 47A. How do we go about um, getting more information about these different sections on the ballot that are being voted on and what resources do, would you offer to us that we check out to be able to, like I said, unpack that sample ballot? a lot better. And that's a very good question. And that's, uh, that is something that we're very concerned about. And I've, I've had a discussion with my colleagues throughout Hines County, um, because they, they those, those initiatives, those re referendums are extremely important. 44, I mean, 47 is extremely important. You know, the judge is going to, the judge is going to rule if we mm -hmm. fail to fail, but if, it's, if, if we can do it for ourselves, let us do it for ourselves. The flag is going to be, uh, the flag is crucial. We don't even want to think about going back to the flag that we, that we, uh, that we just left. 
one thing that I would ask the folk, our folks to be to be mindful of the, the we are not aware of how many people came to the Capitol and lobbied and uh, um, had all types of engagements to get rid of the flag and got the virus as a result of their coming to the Capitol. You know, the virus is in full swing, and we had uh, African, I know, I know at least one, two, three African American ministers that I know that came and were infected. Now, whether they were infected when they got there or they got infected afterwards, but I know that they are, uh, they, once they uh, um, left the Capitol shortly after that, they were infected. So we went through a lot to get to where we are today with that flag and I I don't want and none of us want to see us to go back and we have uh, 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 my colleagues out now getting signatures to try to put a referendum on there to go back to the rebel flag well some folks say well that's not an option well in the, today's reality we don't even want to think about uh, that as being an option but it could very well be an option we don't want to think about it, but it could very well be less dress was it what's at hand. We have about we have a a flag on the ballot. Let us cast our vote for in support of this flag. Some say I don't like it, that's fine. We're not gonna have our way all always. But we have a flag here that we all we can we feel that we can wrap ourselves around. Let's let's vote in support of this flag that we have. The initiative uh, 42, uh, as Brother Baker spoke to, that's going to open up for us to be able to elect African Americans uh, uh, statewide. Uh, it would also open up for uh -huh. uh, Democrats to be elected. Jim Hood could very well have been governor today if we'd have had that in place. But he had uh -huh. his much time focusing up in that's North right. Mississippi to get those 62 uh, House districts and didn't spend as much time and money in uh, to get out the masses of the voters. And, and this basically says that if you get whoever have majority to vote, win the election. And that's what we want. As he was talking about, if we if we'd have had the, 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 that's right. the vote in the in the federal election, Donald Trump wouldn't be president today. Uh, so it, it's uh that's thank you. we need that initiative. Then you have the uh the uh, the marijuana medical marijuana on the ballot, whether you're for it or, or, or not in uh -huh. support of, you know that's it. Take take a position, take a stance there. If you're for it, if you're for it, you have to check the first box to say that you for it or you you for it or, or or you are for it or against it, and then you come down and you check the second box that says that uh, you for 65A. The difference between 65A and 65 I mean, 65 rather, 65A and 65 is that 65 would basically provide for small and minority farmers to be able to participate in that. And, uh, you know, and that's, but there again, it's, it's a personal decision that we're asking individuals to make whether you, whether you support it or not. Then you, but the, the judges will be listed on there as, as being, they don't have the uh, DR by their name because they're supposed to be running uh, in a nonpartisan uh, manner, but that's not the case. That's not the case. Uh, they have all uh, the, the governor, our uh, current governor, is out campaigning with one, uh, and the, uh, the previous governor is out campaigning. And we know those individuals are running as Republican. We have, uh, uh, you know, obviously we have uh, uh, Dorothy Benford uh, that's running in the uh, in the uh, um, House seat. Uh, but with the judges, we have uh, Latrice Westbrook. There's not a DRR behind her name, but uh -huh. she's currently sitting on the uh, on the court of appeal, and she's an African American female that has basically paid very very good attention to uh, to her her and our community. So that's that. But you know, if you're looking for the DRR, it won't be there. Leslie King is also running, but Leslie King is on a poll. Uh, and what I say is that I always check those individuals that 
if they're a Democrat, I check because those those numbers will count in the end. And uh, uh, even though all you need is what one vote uh, to, to win, if you're not if you're unopposed, but I like to have the like to see you had uh, seven thousand individuals to participate in this in this in my election. So I got seven thousand. You and then you're gonna have some folks that's gonna write names in, uh, but. I would look for look and vote for uh, those in, those individuals, and we have to know them. You know, a lot of, and we have to take them into our. Whereas you may know La Latrice West Westbrook, somebody else may not know her. So that's where we we're calling on the community to be the ambassador for for those individuals. And I feel that we're gonna get we'll get justice more so with with her uh, than we would her opponent because we know. Her point was pointed by uh, our current uh, our current governor, so we know where where that where that person stands. Money, uh, they've done fund make fundraisers with uh, with her opponent, so that's going to be the the nucleus of that. And then when you look at the the uh, the presidential race, as brother Lap stated, and you all mentioned, I think we have like ten persons that's running for president. Now you know. Uh, uh, Kanye West doesn't have a bit more chance of winning the president than as my grand my grandmother would say during her lifetime, and she lived to be 102 years old. A man going to the moon, but you know now man's Thank going you. to the moon. But but Thank Kanye you. was put on the ballot to basically try and pull away from what Joe Biden uh, and, and uh, yeah. Harris would be able to do, and we know that. Why up? Uh, but you know, and I laugh at the fact that he's gonna uh -huh. come into Mississippi. I said, well, you know, <laughs> it's not gonna happen to be on the ballot in Mississippi. But I'm just, I, we ain't still encouraging all of our folks to go out and vote in support of uh, someone that we that we really think can uh, win. Remember last last time uh, we lost in in, in uh, the states with Michigan, uh, uh, Ohio. We lost in those states basically because we had a Green Party a candidate on the ballot. And uh, and they took the votes away, you know. And there again, you know, the United States is just not, Ross Perot probably put up more money and ran one of the most formidable candidates as a, a third party candidate than anybody that in, my, in my lifetime. Disturbing thing today that I was reading is that, and this is very unfortunate, reading somewhere that uh, uh, one of the uh, co-founders of Black Lives Matter uh, was uh, saying that they were not going to vote for uh, uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump. There's not, not much, as, much difference between the two. But there again, I don't, you know, I, I, I totally differ. I know Black Lives Matter. I believe in uh, 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 a lot of what, what Black Lives Matter stand for, but that that misinformation and disinformation is not going to help. With a lot of our folks, where you all are intelligent enough to make those formidable decisions, you got a lot of black folks that's not going to do not have the intellect, are not going to use the intellect to to go through and say, well. They're gonna come back and say, "Well, uh, this person said that, so I'm gonna, I'm not gonna vote because they said it's not my vote is not my vote for uh, not a downward for difference between uh, Joe Biden and Donald Trump." And I, I have to absolutely disagree with that. And so we don't need to, we don't need to to, to play into that narrative and and uh, take a chance on our folks going the other way. And I know I went on much longer than probably I should. But when you look at that ballot, and I have I, I have some additional information that I can drop off, but I think social media, social media, even uh, pastor on that on that on that thir on that uh, third on the thirty first of October, that's the last day to vote absentee. That's the last day before. I mean, I'm I'm hoping that if we can get, we can we can do some street corners, and uh, we can blanket every street corner. In uh, 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 West Central Jackson, with information, we're talking about doing. Uh, we're talking about doing a cruising the 
you know, cruising my district, and we can get folks to cruise, everybody to chime in and cruise all of Hines County. And we're not cruising for one candidate, we're cruising for, we're cruising for the, basically for the, for Congressman Thompson, uh, Joe Biden, uh, Senator Harris, uh, and you have, have photos mm -hmm. of those individuals on your, on your vehicle. And you have five or 10 cars just going down from street to street because we have to raise uh, the awareness of our folks that an election is coming up and then the impact of this election on, on really on the, you know, as, a, as a, a First Lady Obama stated, you know, the, 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 mere, the mere survival of our folks because, you know, at my age, um, I don't know if we can live another four years on the on the uh, retirement that we're living under now. I really don't. Wow. Well, I just wanted to just chime in. Uh, this is just so interesting tonight. Thank you, uh, Madam uh, Moderator, for organizing it. And, and just, uh, wow, words cannot express how much I'm really getting so much out of education and otherwise. Uh, I do want to share a uh, few big, uh, big indulgences is that in the bubble, uh, in the chat room, uh, she wanted to say something, Dr. Fred Bridget. Hopefully you will bring her back where she can speak exclusively to us, uh, Dr. Chapman. She certainly wanted to allow her to salute the youth. She had another meeting of the Lynch Street CME Church, the leadership and members, as well as Senator Norwood. She said, this is a very good forum. And when she had another meeting, but she said, I too encourage leaders to start grooming someone right now to take their seat uh, in the future uh, elections. Uh, Dr. Fran Bridges, uh, I wanted to share that on her behalf. But furthermore, uh, what I wanted to share and nothing else uh, Senator Norwood, we have a major election as it relates to the U.S. Senate. Uh, we tried last time, I first got on board in 18, and I know I worked my behind off, but some other things we formed in. We did everything we could to help uh, Senate, uh, our person uh, uh, who's running for Senate, uh, my guest here. Uh, but one of the things I think we were a day late and a dollar short was up there in my area. In my home county, I am originally from Mississippi, in that area called DeSoto County, up there in that area. And also that Gulf Coast uh, did not help us. Uh, we looked at the stats uh, uh, subsequent to uh, the uh, election of uh, Sidney Hyde Smith. Uh, what do we need to do here? Uh, uh, we clearly need to be on board. It's very unfortunate in my home state. It pains my heart when I hear media. I speak of, uh, and I hear it all the time, if he would win and he, if he would become the U.S. Senator, he would be the first African-American since Reconstruction. That does not sound good in this day and age. What do we need to do? I mean, that really vexes my spirit to hear that in 2020 and they and, and uh, the media just run with it. If he would win, he would be the first African-American since Reconstruction. How sad that sounds in 2020. Uh, I uh, digress, uh, Senator Norwood. I think the main thing is in which is, is if we get if we get our folks to go Mike would Mike according to the data that that I had seen in an earlier session was that Mike would need about 36 36 to 38 uh, percent of uh, of the eligible uh, uh, voting uh, uh, voters in the African American to show up and he'd need about 20 25 or 26 uh, the white community to show up, uh, but I think it's you know it's it's kind of sad that here we are, we are we're saying if we can get uh, 30 38 
you know, I think President Obama's last election, I think we got like 62, which was the highest. It was the first time that we outvoted white Americans in uh, uh, probably ever. I, I, I think I, I think that's I think I'm correct in that. But I think as the as the older folks would say, I think it's high time that we have to we got to treat our folks with some tough love. You know, I mean, if you, you know, if you're on food stamps, you have no excuse for not going. We, you know, we don't, let's not give our folks excuses. If you, if you're disabled, that you don't have no, let's don't give our folks excuse. You know, if you have a challenge, let's address that challenge. And then, you know, we can't, but we're not going to give you an excuse not to go out and vote. They're not going to do anything. No, 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 no. If you fail to go and vote, no, they're not going to do anything. And you can't say anything because you didn't participate in the process. You know, if you, when you look at the uh, uh, the impact of, of, if you're on food stamps, you know, they will cut, they will, they're not going to cut the food stamps out because, the food stamps are not being printed to feed us. The food stamps are being printed to give, to keep Walmart in business, to keep Kroger's in business. They could, they can go up on the price of food. If that was not the case, then you know, why would we be giving all of these uh, incentive tax incentives to cooperation rather than giving, giving, taking the tax off food? We're not going to do that. You know, we're not going to do that. So I think that you know. It's high time that we start not allowing our folks to make give us excuses why they are not participating in the process. And uh, yes, they're gonna make it difficult. They're gonna make it difficult. But you know, as African Americans, everything that we got, we had to fight for it. And so that's there's no different than 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 you folks fought for us to get the right to vote. Now we're gonna have to fight with you to get you to go and vote. Now that makes absolutely no sense. You know, you should be fighting. You should be fighting the folks saying, "Look, you know, I'm going to vote." You know, with the folks fought in order for you to get to get the polls open before you go to work, and, and or after you get off work, the polls will still be open. I'm tired. If you're tired on the third, don't worry about it on the fourth. You can be well rested. But you're talking about the you're talking about health insurance is on the ballot. You're talking about salary increases is on the ballot. You're talking about tax going to the rich. I mean, tax breaks going to the rich, and you paying for the, you paying for the rich. Uh, uh, that's on the ballot. All those things on the ballot. So, I say is that it's just that we're gonna have to we're gonna have to you know prick the conscience of, of of African Americans, and you know. The churches, I say, uh, churches are doing a much better job. The churches are doing a much better job. I think part of our problem is, the, the, is that element out there in the street, our young folks, a lot of our young folks, uh, that's a part of a, a circle that's not, they're not going to come through the church door because if they come through the church door, they will get some of the information. They're not coming through the church door. So it's basically that we're going to have to go out uh, and it's going to be very difficult in this pandemic to go out to where they are and provide that information to them. But I'm thinking that if we could, if we can don our masses and get on the street corners and just, you know, just have a, have a conversation, you know, uh, uh, have you got, because your science can speak for yourself. If we can do our parades to the community to, to educate the folks about, you know, they're going to be, some, you're going to, you're going to get some, you're going to ride, uh, uh uh, rouse some attention with some folks to uh, to get up and get involved. I think that's what that's what we're going to have to do. Uh, the, the same battle that we're fighting to get uh, to get our folks out, they're fighting those they're fighting those same battles, but they're winning because you know they have more resources and we can't we can't say we don't have the money. We got to get in there. We got to get out there and do it and make it happen. All right, as time is winding down, I think I have one last question for you, and I'm really enjoying this dialogue. Oh, okay, go, Miss Betty. Yes, go, go, go. 
Uh, Senator <laughs> Noah, I understand, and I agree with you 100% on the getting out. I know that the Jackson Panalytic, the Metro Jackson Panalytic Council is, is planning to do a two hour call on the 26th of October. But my concern is while we're calling, you know, we may be calling the same people. And I like the idea of us really getting out and reaching the masses that are not going to answer their cell phones or house phones or all, you know, I'm not sure where the calling number is going to be. So uh, I think what you just suggested is something I'm going to recommend to the, to the president of the Panalytic Council that we may even consider uh, on that Friday, it, you know, that, that day before and, you know, maybe do something like that as far as getting out and having a, a parade in, in our different neighborhoods. And because I know we, we, we cover Hines, Madison, uh, Rankin and Yazoo County. And you know, those are counties that have, have, uh, you know, right now we're, we're, we're monitoring the census in these, in each one of those counties that they're not as good as they should be, especially in the black neighborhoods. So, you know, that's, that's something. And, and my, you know, my concern is the young people, the young adults who say, well, my vote is not going to count. When you elect a judge yeah. for life, it yeah. will matter. Yeah. And, and I think those are the issues we have to really stress to, to the, our candidates. I mean, our, Central, our voters to let you know if you may not see the results today, but keep living down the road when you can't get a fair trial because of who you have to go in front of and because this particular person is pointed for life and you had the choice to vote on that person prior to them being voted in or appointed as, as, um, as a judge. So All right now. Those are the kind of issues I think that we, as you know, as blacks, have to get uh, our blacks, Hispanics, and all these other people understand that you know the benefit of voting may not affect you today, but just keep going down the road because I can see the changes from 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 the seventies up to the twenty twenty how how things have been in the last in the last fifty years. Absolutely. <laughs> But anybody I'm, else? Okay. Thank you, Dr. And I'm, 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 I think it's, I think it's, it's us coming together. Hello. How we can, how we can connect to one another to make that difference. Are we still on? Yep, we're still here. We're getting ready to wrap up now. Did we Hello? have any more? Oh. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. I just want to, may I, may I make one last statement? Of course. Hello? Yeah, can you hear okay. I didn't hear a response. Uh, yeah. Okay, this is last. I just want to say something. I'm doing a follow-up on what, uh, I think that was Betty Rimmel who spoke uh, about uh, the justices, Supreme Court justices. My thing has been this, and I have spoken this to um, congressional members as well, that they tried this, what I'm getting ready to say, they tried this in 2006 to abolish, um, first of all, the Electoral College, which needs to be abolished, okay? But the other thing is, they need to abolish where the any president appoints Supreme Court justices nine to serve for life. All the states, all fifty states, including the District of Columbia, and this is just my personal belief. I think that they should uh, elect a Supreme Court justice every year. That would give you 51, not nine. If this lady who has been appointed and recommended to go on the Supreme Court, if she is approved, that's three. Those are three individuals that this current president has appointed and gotten in there. That's bad business. We need to wake up 
and we need to be talking with not only just the black legislators, but the white legislators as well. Look back over history and see why the Electoral College was established way back. Look back and see why the Supreme Court justices were appointed by the president. And one last thing, people need to stop saying, because they don't read. Reading is fundamental. Know your history. George Washington was not the first president of this country. It was John Hanson, a black man, 1782. Okay? We've had nine black presidents. Research and you will see it. Okay, now I'm through. All right, awesome discussion. And I think we've kind of already answered my question. I was going to ask as a last question, if anybody else didn't have anything else to ask, it was how do we go about keeping this momentum going? You know, especially after Election Day, and we kind of touched on it a little bit earlier, but how do we go about keeping it going and really just, you know, trying to um, be consistent with getting the message out there of, hey, we need to do more. We need to get involved and all that kind of stuff. So. Exactly what you're doing today. Because, <laughs> okay. Because one thing, in Mississippi, uh, the governor, current governor, next year mm -hmm. will appoint uh, we'll have an opportunity to appoint four uh, college board college board members, and college board members' uh, term is uh, it's like nine, I think it's nine years. I believe it is nine years. It was twelve years. I think it's down to nine. Um, mm -hmm. That's a problem. That's a problem. That's too much power. You know, it's too much power. Then that he that that the governor is going to control the 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 the, uh, the, the college board and those, those appointments will go will go far exceeding his term in office so every day we have issues that's being decided a decision that's being made that's impacting our lives you know we just say for i mean i think i mean i applaud you know, Lynn Street because uh, you can be on, you can be on the network every night with the, with the discussion that uh, that impact the city, the the county, and the state, and uh, our community. So this, I, I applaud you. This is a start. This is a good start. This is my first time participating, and I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to take it to some other folks too. Uh, if you see a good, if you, if you something good happen, there's nothing wrong with taking it somewhere else because this if you're doing good over here if i do good over over here it's just gonna because while all of us will be doing good and that's gonna make the whole city the county and the state you know better so i think that i think that this is a good start uh, for me i think it's an opportunity for us to to try and grow and uh you know we can you have different topics uh, i have no problem participating you know we can use this during the legislative session to get a legislative update uh to get uh we can with you know schedule one we can participate prior to the session beginning we can talk about uh potential legislation uh something that you may want to see and uh it may not be affecting nobody but you but a lot of laws are, are made based on uh based on one person's the impact you have on one person's life. So I applaud you, and uh, I mean, I, uh -huh. I think that's uh -huh. what I'm concerned. Now, this is this is an hour, this is an hour well spent, and you know, and I, I don't, you know, I don't take uh, not just because I was talking because I enjoy the uh, the exchange, but uh, I, I don't take it I don't take it lightly at all. I appreciate it. We most definitely appreciate you because. <laughs> Because um, I don't know, it's just like you said, I mean, prior to, you know, election year period, 
it was just kind of like really intensified with this year with all the different issues and things going on it just it just feels like we could most definitely be doing more but the discussion isn't necessarily being had and you're not able to really figure out how to get involved and where to start so like you said preferably this can be you know a start of a healthy um dialogue a healthy discussion a healthy um just process of people you know learning how to get involved and what they can do more of um you know everybody doesn't necessarily have to be in a limelight but just understand that you know there are necessary steps that you can take in order to make sure that you are being counted so we must definitely thank you so much senator norwood for getting on with us and uh pastor if you have any closing words i want to thank you madam uh uh moderator uh for for helping us and leading us each week uh we want to make sure uh that this is a shout out this goes around the world uh it's going to be on youtube it's going to be uh on our facebook page etc and uh, we just want you to share what this is your segue by the way to share as it relates to the next the upcoming weeks uh that we have uh, let's share that so that the world uh, and the people on our youtube as well as our facebook can hear it about your upcoming schedule okay well like i said we're we're keeping the dialogue going um for the entire month of october so every tuesday leading up to election day we're going to have different speakers come on to just talk about um specific topics on those uh, particular tuesdays we're most definitely going to be recapping what we learned from each previous tuesday as we continue on with this but um like i said every tuesday from six to seven we are most definitely going to be keeping the conversation going about voter participation and why you want to get out and vote for awesome sure sauce, so again. Awesome, sauce, <laughs> awesome, sauce, awesome sauce we want to thank <laughs> sister betty Rimmer, sister francis sanders sister pinky mcmurray sister maddie uh gladney sister chelsea gladney uh dorothy and elvin long ago uh, certainly to you, Dr. Chapman, or wife, Brunel, and uh, to you too, Brother Lamp. I do want to say, uh, I do want to know who, I'd like to know, if you don't mind, L.A. from like Louisiana, or it can be Los Angeles, Los, L.A. L.A., who are you? Lacey A. Hey, Pastor, this is Chelsea. That's my sister. Um, she's actually dealing with my niece right now. That's my sister right now. <laughs> Doctor, I want you to know, Brother Norwood, you blessed our hearts today. We want to keep it true because our uh, moderator is saying to us that we have to keep it within an hour so that people can really enjoy. It will be on Miss Sister Pinky. Send out the link tonight so that the rest of the members can see it. Send one to uh, Senator Norwood so that he might send it to his colleagues, etc., uh, on tonight, and everybody will get it. Uh, let's get ready to close, if nothing else. I see you, Sister Dorothy. Close us out, and we can close in prayer. Thanking you, sweet Father, for this blessed day, Lord. Thanking you for all the information that was gathered upon this day. Thanking you for our moderator. Thanking you for our speaker. Thanking you for the participation. Sweet Father, let none of this return void, sweet Father. Lord, let it go out into the masses, sweet Jesus. Lord, now as we leave your presence, sweet Father, continue to be a hedge of protection, continue to knock out any strongholds, sweet Father, Lord, and we will continue to give you all the praise, all of the honor, and all of the glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you so very much. Uh, we appreciate everyone. Thank you all so much. We hope to see you uh, next <laughs> week as well.